the study of evil. I'm going to say it often. You've got to get all the videos or audios on this series. If you miss out on one, you may mistakenly say that Stiley said this, and I may not have said it. What you heard is one part of a story, because we're dealing with evil again. Evil is sin, but evil may not be sin. Evil may be the consequences of sin, and evil may be evil and sin. And consequences of sin. So today, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24, and we're looking at adjectives uh, describing and so far what we have, let's see what we have here. We have, as far as evil, looking for a reference here, we have an evil beast. An evil congregation, an evil place, an evil generation, an evil diseases, evil of the men of Shechem, evil doers, evil man. I feel a sneeze doing it, so forgive me. A congregation of evil doers. Forgive me. No, it's coming. Thank you. And then you have every day people rest my words and their thoughts are against me for evil. We have evil thoughts. Today we pick up Proverbs 6.24. I don't know how many videos we got so far. I didn't, I didn't check to see. Next I'll have to check to see what we're up to. But YouTube. SoundCloud, my Facebook, uh, the one with the bird, I think, Twitter, I think that is, on our website, the Hayward Family website. But we have 624. You got to get them all. To keep thee from an evil woman, from flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. So we have a woman. We've had a man. Now we got to. A woman we've had evil men we have an evil man and we sure don't want to be pre prejudiced with the sexes we don't want to say that the Bible sexes we have an evil woman and it is a sorry state that so far this is the number 11th and this is not all the evils this may not have been all the adjective the evils but these are the ones I picked up but right now, 11 times have we looked up the adjective of evil. And mankind is capable of being evil. And even the beasts of the earth are capable of being evil. And I know when we think of evil, we think of, you know, television and movies. Oh, and, you know, the, the guy that comes out in the woods and kills all the campers. And, you know, the, the, the big evil beast comes out of the sea like... Antichrist and the false prophet. Well, but we have evil female. And I went through the list just a few minutes ago. Proverbs 28 5. It seems like we're doing five every time, so let's see what happens. I'm in no, I mean, we may get to a long study, we may get to a short study. I'm, I'm no time frame for this. May go over a certain amount of time and you can pause it and I'm not in a rush. I mean if you did our if you did our full study, you know that was long. Was it rush? Proverbs 28, verse 5. We have evil men understanding not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. So Evil men. We've already okay, Stalin, you already done men. You already done man. You just did woman and offended me. But we have evil men that do not seek the Lord. There it is. Now let me ask you a question. 
Can a Christian be saved, signed, sealed, and delivered? And being evil, know not the judgment of God or seek after the Lord. Yes. There are plenty of worldly Christians out there. They're saved just as much as I'm saved. They have no idea the wood, hay, or stubble, gold, silver, precious stones in the judgment seat of Christ. They have no idea that they're going to have to be held accountable for what they do still. But they're going to heaven. Now, I'm not going to judge them. The Bible says I can't judge man. I can judge the thing. But there are Christians out there who have no idea. You see what happened? And you can't blame the Christian. Who just got saved. Because we live in the day of the Laodicean church age. Unlike any other church age where, all right, I got him saved. Yay. Where is he? Well, I don't know. They don't even try to get them in church. They don't try to get find them a church. My pastor had a man get saved when we were on an evangelistic thing on, on a Saturday. The guy got saved, generally saved. And he said, Pastor, said, well, this is my phone number. Give me a call. And I, I forget where the guy lived. I'll help you find a church. I'm dealing with somebody right now in Missouri. If they get saved, I'm going to get along with my pastor and we're going to try to find that person a church. I've had men and women get saved under me. My father-in-law got saved and I grew him in the Lord. My first wife, Lisa was saved before we were married, and then we got married. I grew her in the Lord. My second wife, Tracy, was already saved, but I grew her in the Lord. She had no idea anything in the Bible. And there are saved people out there, and there are evil people that don't seek out the Lord. Now, take it for, take it for granted, okay? Okay, let's go on the other side of the coin, flip it over. They have received the Lord Jesus Christ and they're saved. And the very first thing they should do is go and try to do something. Find out. The very first thing you should do is get a Bible. When I got saved, the next day, I went to church Sunday morning. I was saved on a Saturday. I stood up and said, people, I received Jesus Christ yesterday. And then I went and told my father. And I don't know how long it was after that. I went to work and I stole the Bible. <laughs> I was seeking. They don't seek the Lord. That's evil man. Saved or lost. Jeremiah 13.10. And that's sad. They'll seek anything else, but they won't seek the Lord. Jeremiah 13, 10. This evil people, which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart, and walk after other gods, to serve them, and to worship them, shall be shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. <laughs> you just hear what the Lord just said about these evil people, you're good for nothing. Have you heard that expression? Good for nothing? It comes out of the Bible. Yeah, I, I always wanted the people to say, oh, the Bible is just working, it was just written by man, and then they go say, you're good for nothing. By the skin of your teeth, that's Bible. The apple of my eye, that's Bible. So people, well, you're a good people, okay? People, their evil is not listening and obey God, but rather religion. I meet them every week I go to the farmer's market. Every week. People who knock on doors, meet them every week. People who stand out and, and open up Bible with somebody, meet them every week. 
Whatever you do in any evangelistic work, you're going to run into these people. You're turning people away. That's not what Jesus would do. I let my light shine. But the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'm good. Well, you're, no, you're not. You're an evil person. Because I just told you what the Bible said. I'm a good person. You just didn't listen to what God said. And now I'll quote to them, well, the Bible says there's none that do good, no, not one. You don't want to be evil? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Tell me how. Now open a Bible. I dealt with men in prison. Your Bible's wrong. I showed them where their Bible's wrong. They said, well, okay, get me a King James Bible. That's not evil. I dealt with a man, a good man, loves the Lord, and he fought me because, you know, his. it's no difference with the King James Bible, all the Bibles. I fought many men about that. And when you when you believe and, and somebody's trying to help you, somebody's trying to grow you, they're trying to show you what's right, and you don't want to listen, and you don't want to adhere to the King James Bible, and you got a modern Bible, you're an evil man, you won't listen to the Lord. You really believe the King James Bible is the Word of God? Absolutely. I believe it's a sin to have another Bible. Other than the King James. So you have that. Jeremiah 24 3. Jeremiah 24 3. Jeremiah 24 3. Thus saith the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, figs, the good figs, very good, and evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. But we got evil figs. What is the biblical definition of evil? Well, Stanley, you, I'll give it to you. Look at verse 2, chapter 24, verse 2. One basket had good figs. Even like the figs that are first ripe. Yummy. The other basket had very naughty figs. Which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Have you ever been called or called somebody naughty? It's a naughty boy there. It's a naughty girl. The Bible says naughty means evil and evil means naughty. Jeremiah 24, 2 and Jeremiah 24, 3. Look at it right there. You don't have to go all the way down the page. You don't have to go to another book right there. Jeremiah 24, 2 and 3. There's good figs. There's good figs in 3. There is naughty figs, verse 2, and there are evil figs in verse 3. So what do we get an adjective of this one? Evil means naughty. So you got the proper phase as long as he's making a list, checking it twice to find out who's been naughty or nice. To find out who's been evil. Naughty has come to mean this neutral term. I mean, in the world of definitions on a scale of one to ten, one being evil, wicked, Ted being great and wonderful, naughty seems to be a five. No, it's not. Not in the Bible. That's like that expression I grew up with again. Finders keepers, lose your weepers. Not according to the Bible. You're supposed to find the owner and let the owner come and find you. And then give it up. Matthew 7, 18. Matthew 7, 18. I think we're going to stick with five. We, we haven't done much time, but, you know, let's soak it. Matthew 7, 18. Get the last one. Matthew 7, 18. I'm not in a rush. Matthew 7, 18. 
a good tree, does that sound familiar? Cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh-oh, another, another definition. Another definition. Fruit, but not as fruit found in a produce section in a farmer's market, your grocer. The fruit is actions of people. If you are truly good, your actions and reactions will not be evil. If you love the Lord and you want to do right, and that preacher has said something against your sins, you're not going to get mad at the preacher. You're not going to get offended at the preacher. Now, you might get a little irk, but that irk will get you to repentance. That's a good fruit. A bad fruit is that preacher, hey, who gives him the right to do that? Oh, out of here. Not coming back no more. That's a bad fruit. The fruit is the actions of the people. If someone is in action and always involved in and doing evil, that is because they are evil. Though they may proclaim their goodness in this, of the years of my ministry, countless times. My ministry seems to be that people come up to me and people have their their ministries and you know their catch phases of the people, but mine is I'm good. I already said, if you don't do the word of God according to Jeremiah, you're evil. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'm a Catholic. Right? I'm Baptist. You're not doing the word of God. You're evil. And everything you do is evil. You are an evil tree. And you may have some good fruit. Well, it's not pleasing to God. And I have again met many good men in prison. Most often, good men do not go to jail for doing good, but doing evil. Would you agree with me? And I've had some men tell me they're guilty and it was vile. And I met men in prison who were good. Maybe they were innocent. But you know, if we were to look at the crimes that we do, everybody belongs in jail and everybody belongs in hell. Don't we have some bad, evil fruit in ourselves? See, we're not always that good, are we? We're a messed up tree as Christians. We bring forth good fruit and evil fruit. The evil fruit would be wood, hay, or stubble. The good fruit, gold, silver, precious stone. Watch a person and within time, you will see what kind of tree they are, whether good or corrupt, by their fruit, reaction or action. One thing a judge will do is, I, I, I talk to a judge and I talk to a police officer. He'll just let you talk. The more you talk will tell you who and what you are. Your mouth will declare whether you're good or you're evil. And notice that evil is a representation of the word corrupt. Now we saw the word naughty in Jeremiah, but now it's corrupt. Another good Bible definition of the word evil is not only naughty, but corrupt or corruption. Do you know anything that is truly corrupt in action or reaction? Well, the, the government's corrupt and it's biblically evil. How can you say the government is biblically evil, corrupt, they will not do what God tells them to do, Jeremiah. They are not doing good, Matthew 7. So we have seen the actions and reactions and definition. We have seen all kinds of people and we're not done. 
with the adjective. We're at, we're stopping at, this is, this is number 15. And let me check here. Move ahead here, let's see. We've got 34 more topics to do. A lot more weeks. <laughs> At least seven weeks in total, and we're already up. I, I forget where we're at now. And I have not done all all the adjectives. I didn't do adjectives that would already looked at what we looked at. I mean, there's a lot of places where it says evil men. I found the one good one that fits the topic. I may have missed an evil adjective of a word, of a noun, person, place, or thing. I may have missed one. I'm not perfect. But where do we fall in verse in our fifteenth lesson, fifteenth topic with two or three introductions? I've been naughty. I've had my mom and grandma say, "You're a naughty boy." You know what that meant? I'm being evil. I have not always done what God told me to do. You know what that is? That's evil. I have been an evil man. I have been an evil congregation. I have done things that's corrupt. Look at the fruit that's on my tree and look at the fruit that's on the ground. I'm sorry to say I've got good fruit and I got evil fruit. Listen, just because I'm saved doesn't mean I am no longer a sinner. God has, I, I was just telling my pastor today on the phone, I'm reading through the book of the, uh, through the Bible, and I came across a verse that hit one sin that I'd done, twice. And then I hit another, another sin, and I was like, Lord, the consequences, but if there was a mistake in the consequences, Lord, I confess those two sins. According to 1 John 1, 9. And then the third one, if, if, if I have been mistaken, Lord, I confess that sin too. I don't. I, those sins may have been confessed. They may not have been confessed. But you know what they were? If they were not confessed, for my entire life, since those sins have happened, they've been on that tree rotting bugs and worms and smelling and making my tree look ugly until today when I confessed them, when I believe I, I, this first time I, confessed, I could have confessed them before, but let's say I, I confessed them today. I put them under the blood of Jesus Christ. God cut those fruits off the tree. He got rid of those fruits permanently. I will not have to bear those fruits anymore. But guess what? They're gone. But you know also what will happen. Now listen. My sins are forgiven. I am cleansed. Sometimes. The good fruit and the evil fruit. Fall to the ground. The seeds of the good fruit. And the seeds of the corrupt, corrupt fruit. Will hit the ground. And they will germinate. And I may confess those sins for the corrupt ones, and I may get glory from God for the, from the good one, but the ones that corrupted, hey, I may confess them. God may pick them off the ground and throw it away and put, you know, not have me ever be charged, but the corrupt fruit had put seeds in the ground. And God's not marked whatsoever man soweth good fruit, good, good thing, evil. Evil fruit, naughty fruit, corrupt fruit. If they bear seeds and grow, I'm going to have to bear, hey, listen, it's under the blood, but I may have to have some bad crops. I may have some corrupt or naughty crops with the good ones. Like into the parable of the sower, the, I mean, the, the tares and the wheat. 